a savior. I was praying this morning on the way uh, to to church, and you know, uh, I, when we come to Christmas time, we always um, adjust. Things are always a little bit different, and so I was actually I was I was literally and specifically praying, Lord, help me to be flexible this morning and adjust whatever needs to be adjusted because we knew today was going to be a special day. So I was looking at our timeline, and then I was looking at my message, and I just kind of laughed and chuckled inside. Um, so we're going to adjust. So if it seems a little like, well, does this fit with what you're saying? Just just know that I am adjusting in the midst of things um, this morning because I am looking at the time as well. But would we have wanted to have cut anything from this morning's service? Not a thing. Not a thing. It was a great morning thus far. But I want to talk to you this morning, uh, the good news of Christmas. Uh, to you is born a Savior. And um, it's a very simple message. You know, when we come to Christmas and we come to the Christmas story, all of us know the story of Christmas, the birth of Jesus, so very well. We've all heard messages uh, um, about the birth of Jesus. And so for us as pastors, when we come to this time, um, it is not, it's not so much that we pray and say, Lord, something new, something different. Um, it's not that, but it is instead, Lord, what do you want to say to your people at this time? That's what we always want. If we hear from the Lord, then our hearts are blessed. When the Lord is in our midst, we are given life again. We are changed. We are transformed. We are healed. Um, we're convicted. We are brought closer to him because he's in our midst. And that's what makes us different from any other Christmas gathering, any other type of Christmas gathering we may be part of this Christmas season. A lot of you uh, with your families, if you're working in a family, you may have a Christmas gathering. A lot of you will have Christmas parties in your offices or with your blood, uh, flesh and blood families, depending on where you are. Um, and these Christmas gatherings may be, who knows what they're going to be like. Uh, uh, some of them will have gift exchanges, uh, some of the, oh, all sorts of things, games, all sorts of things. What, what makes this gathering, what makes this time different? The Bible tells us what makes this different, and the difference is that his presence is with us. When Moses was leading the people to the promised land, and they had disobeyed God, and God said, I'll send my angel, uh, I'll send my angel ahead of you, and he will take you to the land, but I'm not going with you. Remember, we've talked about this before. Remember what Moses said? He said, God, if you don't go with us, I don't want to leave. We don't want to leave this place. How will we be different? How will we be seen as different from the nations around us if, you're, if you don't go with us? And that's what makes it different, brothers and sisters. Whatever we're part of this Christmas, when we're gathered in his name, that makes the difference. That makes the difference. And so as we come together this morning, it's not about something new for us this morning. This is a simple message, and you've probably heard parts of this before, but I believe it's the Lord's message for us this morning. And I just want to talk about uh, the announcement of Christmas, the good news of Christmas. And I want us to look at some of the announcements and some of the reactions. I had several levels of reactions, but we probably aren't going to get any further than the shepherds because of the time, but that's okay. And um, I want to start in the Old Testament. We know this so well. A lot of you could have this memorized, don't you? I, I know I do. And as I've told you all before, because I'm older than a lot of you, I grew up with King James. So the things that I've memorized, it was in the King James version, thee and thou and so on. But uh, we know this so well. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For me, as I was reading, reading this uh, this week and meditating on it, and this is not our the main message this morning, but I saw something I hadn't really seen before in this announcement, in this promise of the coming of Jesus, of uh, the one who's promised, the one that's anointed by the Lord. When Jesus came to earth, he came in a physical form, in a full expression of who God was, a full expression, nothing missing, nothing lacking. And when we look at this passage in Isaiah 9, 6, do you know what we see in the promise of the one who's going to come? We see God the Father, we see God the Son, we see God the Spirit, don't we? Remember when the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, it's good for me to go away? The Holy Spirit, he will be your counselor. So of a wonderful counselor, 
We have the Prince of Peace, that's Jesus. We have the Everlasting Father, God Almighty. And here's this perfect expression of God, perfect expre expression, nothing missing, nothing lacking in the one who would come, who would take on flesh, the flesh that you and I have, would walk this earth for about 33 years and then go to the cross, that's why he came, carrying our sins, our shame, our sickness, our pain, our guilt, our condemnation, our cost, bearing it to the cross and paying the price, dying for us, and then living again. And that's all part of the Christmas story. And then we look a little bit further, and we look at Luke 2, and this is the part that um, I always remember from my childhood. In our family, we would always read the Christmas story on New Year's Eve, on Christmas Eve, sorry. We'd turn the lights down low, and uh, we'd have the, the Christmas tree lights, and mom or dad, I, we did this in Singapore as I was growing up, and then in the U.S. as well. And we would always read the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2, always in the King James. And so we know this part as well. Uh, this is just part of it. The shepherds were out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. We don't know which angel it was, because the Bible doesn't tell us. However, it's almost certainly the angel Gabriel, almost certainly, because he is, the he is seen as the messenger of God, and Gabriel is the one, Gabriel is the one who appears to Mary with, the, with uh, the, the message that she will be the one to bear the Messiah. Um, and so the angel brings good news. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's Christ, the Lord. Um, so he's the one that's sent from God. And then another one that actually comes almost uh, either a few months up to a year and a half, maybe two years later, probably not that long. And this announcement is kind of a backhand announcement, but this is after Jesus was born. Wise men from the east arrived unexpectedly in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has born king, been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east. We've come to worship him. Not such a welcome announcement to Herod, and we're not going to get to that this morning. We're going to look mostly at the shepherds. Um, Herod wasn't so happy about that announcement because that meant, in his thinking, he wasn't going to be king. Because Herod was an illegitimate king. Herod was not a Jew, and he was not born a king. He'd been appointed king by the Romans. And the news of one who was born king of the Jews disturbed him greatly, and all of Jerusalem with him. And I was thinking about that. We're not going to get that far this morning. We'll look at the shepherds. But you know, for people, when they hear the good news of Jesus, we call it the good news of Jesus. But the news of Jesus is not always welcome to people, is it? For some people, it's offensive. For some people, it upsets their apple cart. For some people, it's a challenge to the way they think and live, and the news of Jesus is not so welcome, because Jesus is who he is, and he doesn't change, and he represents perfect truth and perfect grace, but this is who Jesus is. So for Herod, it wasn't so very welcome. Um, but I want us to look this morning uh, at these announcements and how the, shepherd, uh, how the shepherds responded to the announcement. So we just read uh, that the angel appeared in the sky. And uh, we're, we're going to, actually, sorry, let me go back again just a minute uh, to the, look at, at this middle passage, Luke 2, 8 through 11. So the shepherds are out living in the fields, and here comes the announcement. Uh, you know, I just got back from the U.S., and whenever you're traveling, there are a lot of an announcements. Have you noticed that? Especially when you're, when, you're, when you're going by air, all sorts of announcements. And you kind of keep your ears perked. Is this announcement for me? You know, if you're waiting, maybe they announce the flight. Or maybe, sadly, they announce a delay um, or, or things like that. And uh, uh, I was thinking about that because uh, we fly all sorts of ways. We travel in all sorts of ways. And I noticed something. Sometimes the announcements were not for me because I'm an economy sort of person. You know, that's how I fly. And then there were some, that, there were some announcements that were for a business class or, or other things. And then there were some announcements that were for first class. Those announcements weren't for me. My announcements were all for the economy, economy level. And so sometimes there are announcements that don't really apply to us. But as we look this morning uh, at what the angel angel and then the angels proclaim and announce to the shepherds. Here's something that we see. And I love this. Look with me as we look at this passage because the angel says 
to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. To you. And I want you to open your heart to something this morning if you have not thought of it uh, in this way before. The announcement of Jesus and the coming of Jesus to the world, although it's past now, it is for you this morning. It's for you. And if you haven't thought about that before, I want you to think about it this morning. It is for you. The angel says, it is good news for all the people. It's for all the people. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And I, I love this I love this thought, and it's one that we need to hang on to for Christmas. The coming of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the salvation of Jesus, the forgiveness of Jesus, the healing of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the wisdom of Jesus, the peace of Jesus, the restoration of Jesus, everything that is part of the announcement that he has come is for you this morning. I talk with people, and Pastor Renee does as well, I talk with them all the time. And um, when I was in China, and you all know that I lived there for uh, a long time, as did Joseph, we were buddies way back when, when both of us were younger. I don't see how Joseph can still look the same and I look so much older, but nevertheless, it is true. Um, but way back then, and we would sometimes talk with people, and I'm sure Joseph would tell you the same thing. And when I talked with my Chinese friends or my Chinese students, they would sometimes reply, oh, this is for the West. Oh, oh, this is good news. It's for Westerners. You know, Jesus is a Westerner, which of course is not true. Jesus was Middle Eastern. Uh, he is from the East. Um, but we would talk with people and they would say, oh, this is not for me. This is for you. This is for you. And I, I want us to make, I want to make an application today as we, as we look at this, because the announcement that the angel gave about Jesus made it very clear that the good news about Jesus is for you this morning, and it's for me. In that day, shepherds were sort of the lowest class. At one time, they had been highly honored. Uh, it was a noble profession. But by this time, if you were a shepherd, uh, only the elderly who couldn't do anything else uh, took care of sheep, uh, or only the youngest ones, they were stuck with the task of taking care of the sheep. They were quite isolated. It was, it was hot. It was dirty. Um, it was smelly. If you've ever been around sheep, you know, we see these cuddly pictures of sheep. We have this pretty little gilded sheep right up here on the table. It's so nice, but that's not the reality of sheep. They're, they're smelly. <laughs> they really are. And the work of taking care of sheep was not necessarily pleasant, so it was relegated to the elder, elderly and to the very young. <laughs> and so here they are, and this grand announcement comes to them in the field. Now, how does that apply to us this morning? I think it applies to us because I talk with people, and some of you may be included in that, that sometimes feel the good news of Jesus is not for you because you don't really qualify. You're not good enough. Uh, you've tried, but you've messed up a lot. You've tried, but you have blown it yet again, even after promising God, I'm going to do better. Now that describes all of us, doesn't it? We try and we try and we try and we, we feel that the good news of Jesus, all the promises in his word, they don't apply to us anymore. God's disappointed in us. Um, we've blown it. And, and so this is the, the good news in the word. It's for somebody else, but it's not really for me because I've really messed up. And a lot of us feel that way and think that way. And some of you this morning feel that way and think that way. What I want to say to you is this. The good news of Jesus is for you this morning. Don't believe the lie of the enemy that will cause you to 
reject or say the good news of Jesus is not for me. It's for you. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Do you know why this news is for you if you feel like you're not worthy or you're not good enough? Because you need a Savior. <laughs> You need a savior, and so do I, because we can't save ourselves. We've tried, haven't we? Have you ever tried to save yourself? You tried to be better. You've tried to do better. You've tried to meet the, all these requirements. You couldn't do it, could you? We need a savior. And so to you is born this day in the city of David a savior, which is Christ the Lord. I talk with people sometimes who feel, I don't need a savior. I'm pretty good as I am. I, I'm pretty good. I, I, I don't really need... Jesus. I don't really need a lot. I'm, I'm good enough. And what I want to say to you is this. We all need a Savior. Not one of us is good enough. Not one of us. And if up to now, I just want to let you know, up to now, if you've been able to make it on your own, I can promise you one thing. The time will come when you will see and you'll find out, I, I can't make it on my own. I need a Savior. And Jesus is that Savior. And so the announcement is for all the people. We know the verse so well, for God so loved the world. The world, every one of us, the goods, the good ones of us, the bad ones of us, or as that Western movie says, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, <laughs> that, that old Western movie. It's true, it's true. Every one of us. This announcement is for us. Nobody's excluded. Nobody's first class, business class economy. The announcement is for every one of us. And then I want us to look just a little bit at the response of the shepherds. When the angel had left, angels had left them, uh, I'm, I'm cutting out part of it because of the time, we know that after the initial announcement, then the whole sky fills with angels. Can you imagine what that was like? Late last night, as I was preparing for bed, I was looking online, and uh, now Letty is not here, but she could tell you this anyhow. Last night... For those of us who are budding astronomers, last night was the Geminid meteor shower, the brightest of the year, every year. It's around this time. Here in Hong Kong, uh, from uh, starting, uh, could be most seen from about eight in the evening till about four in the morning. And so I looked at it, but the peak of it was something like two in the morning, and I thought, nah, eh, eh. <laughs> so I, I, went on, I went on to sleep. And it's, it's kind of hard to see the meteors anyhow in Hong Kong, right, with all of the lights. But it, it, apparently it would, did anybody sit up to watch it? Uh -huh. None of us are budding astronomers, are they? I'll bet Letty and, Ke and, and, uh, uh, and her husband, perhaps, um, uh, Kenneth, looked at it. So. But um, I was thinking about that. Here's the meteor shower. Amazing. Maybe they would see 20 or 40 meteors in one hour, if you're fortunate, in a dark area. Folks, think what that was like that night. Can you imagine that? An angel filling the night sky. And then angels completely filling the sky. Amazing. Amazing. Truly. Much more than any meteor shower that we could see. Well, how do they respond? We see that when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So here's the first thing I want you to look at in their response. And the first thing is this. Oh, we're a bunch of skeptics, aren't we? Well, I don't know. Does God really mean it? Well, I know the Bible says whatever, but in my experience, we are so skeptical when we come to the Word of God. I love the response of the shepherds. What is their response? <sighs> Right? It's like, hey, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They, they don't even question. They don't even stop to think, ah, oh, come on. How can this be? Instead, having not yet seen, they say, let's go see what has happened. Here's this wonderful heart response. It's just, yes, I, we believe it. Do you know why they believed it? And it's the same reason that we too can believe. They believed because the Lord had told them. The Lord had told them. May I say to you, if the Lord tells you, if it's in his word, you can believe it. You don't have to think about it. We well, can think about it if you want to, but don't, let, don't start doubting. But can it be whatever? Remember Psalm 30, verse 5, modern translation? The Lord keeps every promise he makes. That was one of our themes some years ago. If God says it to you, you can believe it. 
If it's in his word, you can believe it. God always tells the truth. He always tells the truth. And for the shepherds, I think probably simple hearts and, and a simple thinking, which is how we should be as well. They believed. They said, hey, let's go see. And so the first response, it really was, it was just so simple. They believed. They believed. And notice also, they accepted it for themselves. Yeah, we're shepherds. We're stinky. We're smelly. We're at the bottom rung of the totem pole, but it's for us. It's for us. And they accepted it for themselves. Don't discount any part of God's word to you. Don't discount anything and say, well, that's just for Pastor Renee because he's a pastor. That's just for Pastor Jennifer because, you know, she's really holy because she's a missionary's kid and so on and so on. The promises of God and the word of God, it's for every one of us. It really is. And so the shepherds, they accepted it. So simple. Yeah, this is for us. And off they went. Off they went. What a wonderful example. What a wonderful example. Um, may, may our hearts be moved and touched by this example of the shepherd's response to the announcement this morning. We, we sometimes, we're so reluctant, aren't we, to accept the promises of God. Have you ever been? How many of you have ever, you, yes, I know God forgives, but this is the 27th time I've done it. I don't know if God really forgives. Have you ever dealt with something like that? I have. I have. We're so quick, listen, we're so quick to believe the lies of the enemy, we're so slow to believe the truth of God. We really are, aren't we? We really are. I want to read something to you. Because we think, uh, so he says, let's go. So they hurried off. Uh, let me, we'll come back to that one. Look with me at Ephesians 4, uh, Ephesians 1, 4 through, uh, 4 through, Four, four and five. I think this is from the New Living Translation. I love this translation. For those of you this morning who are struggling with the promises of God, for those of you who are struggling with the grace of God, because Christmas is all about grace. It really is. Look at this. Look at the, this passage. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. I love verse 5, don't you? This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. When was the last time that you in your life and you felt I'm, I'm, I gave great pleasure, <laughs> you know, all the kids this morning. So, so Elise was up here on the front row smiling, and she made her mom, her dad, now her dad sat on the second row, but she made her mom promise, front row, mom, front row, and, and so I, I sat in, a, and Eileen said, yes, I promise, front row, and Elise brought great pleasure to you this morning, didn't she, to mom and dad this morning. Great pleasure. Imagine that, brothers and sisters. God decided this and planned this for your life and my life. And when you respond to him, it brings him great pleasure. Imagine that. God, God, it brings him great pleasure. But I'm just a shepherd. I'm unimportant. I'm dirty. I'm smelly. I've blown it. I'm not good enough. Nobody's good enough on their own. Nobody's good enough without Jesus. Each one of us is smelly, dirty, stinky, and not worthy without Jesus. Without Jesus. But God gave us Jesus. And therefore, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Died for me, died for you. And because of that, we bring him great pleasure. That's how we can respond to the announcement, uh, the good news of Jesus coming. Let's look just a little bit further. Hang on just a minute. Got to have a little bit of water here, sorry. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. I want you to see one other thing about this. What do the shepherds do when they hear the good news? What did they do? So they hurried off to find Mary and Joseph and the baby. How many of us when God is speaking to our hearts or we read something or we hear a message, how many of us put it on pause and say, let me think about this for a while? How many of us? Most of us. 
at one point or another. How many of us think, well, let me think about it. How many of us, well, when I get things worked out in my life, then I'm going to reply, then I'm going to respond to the Lord. But right now, I got to work some things out. Brothers and sisters, learn from the shepherds this morning. They hear the announcement, they hear the good news, and they hurried off. They hurried off to find them. The response was immediate. They didn't take time to think about it. They didn't take time to, well, maybe it's this. No wasting of time. They hurried off and found, and, and found them. We look at this, and then it says, and we're, we're going to come to a close with this this morning. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. The first announcement was glorious. Angels in the midnight sky or in the night sky, we don't know what time of night it was, in the night sky, lighting up the sky. May I tell you this morning, there is something that pleases God's heart more than angels lighting up the night sky. And that is your life lighting up a dark world that brings more pleasure to the Lord. Your life is an announcement of the good news of Jesus Christ. It really is. It really is in every way and in every situation. And then it ends with something which maybe you haven't noticed before in verse 20. It says the shepherds returned because they had to take, hey, they had to take care of sheep, you know. They still had to go back out there in the fields. The sheep were still a stinky, smelly, baying. They needed grass, they needed water, and there was work to do. But it says that, um, that they went back out and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. And we're going to end with this this morning, which were just as they had been told. Remember how we started out just a few minutes ago that the, the shepherd said, let's go see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They believed in the very beginning. This passage ends, if you didn't notice it before, with the same truth. They told everybody all the things they'd heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Beloved, you can count on God and His Word. You can count on what He says to your heart. You can count on everything that you read in His Word, every single thing. Even if it's hard to believe, you can count on it. God will never lie to you. He will never pull a bait and switch. He'll never tell you one thing, promise you one thing, and deliver something else. God will keep his word to you, and everything you read in his word, you can bank on it. You can count on it. Your life can depend on it, because God will always do what he says he will do. That's one of the announcements. That's one of the parts of the good news of Christmas this morning. So we're just going to close in prayer this morning. And... Um, I'm going to ask you, if you're not, I'm going to ask you to be like the shepherds this morning in responding to the good news. This is a message for you if you're a Christian, because a lot of times, honestly, a lot of times it's Christians that are the slowest to believe and respond to the promises of God. And this is also a message for you this morning if you have not yet begun a relationship with Jesus. This is a great time to begin a relationship with Jesus. So we're just going to pray. Imagine this. If and when you respond to God, it brings him great pleasure. That just amazes me. And Lord, we come to you this morning. We thank you that you have been with us, that you are in the, in the midst of your people when we gather in your name, and we have gathered in your name this morning. We thank you for this vignette, this part of the Christmas story of the shepherds hearing the good news. And Lord, our hearts are touched by their response to the announcement that the angels brought, that they believed it, that they accepted it as being for them, that they responded, and they responded quickly, and they responded wholeheartedly. And Lord, we want to do that as well this morning. God, we come to you again with open hands and open hearts. And Lord, we want to say we believe you. And Lord, help us when we don't. We want to believe you. We don't want to believe the lies of the enemy. But Lord, we want to believe the truth that you speak to us every day in your word. We want to have open hearts to the good news that to us is born a Savior, Christ the Lord. 
and that at just the right time that Savior died for us, and that because you loved us, you did give us Jesus, not to condemn us, not to judge us, because we were already judged and condemned, but that we might be saved through him. We thank you, O oh Lord, for Jesus and for the good news that has come to each one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, everyone. Pastor Renee.